Today I'm going to show you how to do an oil change and the first thing we're going to do is drain the oil. And the best time to do an oil change is when the oil is a little bit warmer or hot, but if it's hot it's a, it's, you, you may get burned. So uh, the best time is after about half an hour after the engine's been running at operating temperature. However, you can do it cold. Uh, you just have to be a little more patient when it drains. Now we've got our vehicle up in the hoist safely and we've uh, looked up all the filter and the oil specifications. I'm going to break in here with a couple of pictures. There's the filter book and it's on the bench by the hoist and we're going to look up a 1996 F-150 with a 4.9 engine and we're going to look at the columns and we look we find the uh, appropriate number is an L30001 and that's the filter we use we've looked it up and checked and that's the one we're going to use in the um, in the truck turns out it's the same filter that we took off because the and the now we're going to proceed once we know that we have the filter at hand and the oil at hand then we go ahead and drain the oil if you drain the oil beforehand and find that you have no oil in stock, then the vehicle uh, may not uh, be ready to go that afternoon. In the morning it's okay, but in the afternoon you make sure you have the filter and you have the oil. So the first thing we got to do is identify the oil pan and uh, I'll cover that in some still shots later. A and once we've identified the oil pan, we have to select the right wrench for the for the drain plug and, and whatnot. Some of the drain plugs are very tight, so uh, you got to be careful that you do not strip the head of the uh, drain plug and uh, make sure you're turning it the right way. So let's uh, open the drain plug. Now that we've selected this as our uh, to drain the oil into, and it's a, a proper device for doing that. But at first, when I loosen the plug, I'm, I'm going to move it out of the way. And then once the, the oil pan plug is loose, I'll then put it up to drain the oil. So here's a still shot of the oil pan. You can see the plug, you know, the oil pan's of course in the center of the pitcher and the plug is just at the bottom of that center part. And to the right is the start of the transmission. So we're now we determined that is the oil pan. We're gonna drain the oil. raise this, there's a clutch at the bottom, I turn it counterclockwise, raise it and then it locks it in position. Okay, so it's finger loose, I'm going to raise this up higher so I do not make a mess. If you make a mess, it's, it's okay as long as you put some Zorball on it afterwards. And now we let the oil, we let the oil drain for a few minutes. This is, this oil is warm. The vehicle was operating about an hour ago. I'm going to inspect the oil pan plug gasket and quite often you'll find they're cracked or deteriorated and we have replacements. And this oil pan plug is either in the oil pan tight or sitting on the hoist completely out. And the reason for that is we don't want to just install it loose because we may end up forgetting to tighten it. If we leave it out completely and we go to put oil in it, we'll just see a mess on the floor, which is not a big deal. We just laugh and clean it up and uh, put the oil pan plug in tight and uh, fill the oil again. You'll note the stream changes angles. I don't know if you can see that. And 
and uh, you've got to make sure that the, the bucket is underneath the entire sweep of the oil. And if you get oil on the floor, it's not a big deal. You just make sure that you, you put Zorbal on it or clean it up. Now we have about 99% of the oil out of the oil pan now. <clears throat> the dribble you see is not essential that we get out, but uh, we could use this time to select the filter or prepare the filter and uh, let the oil drain. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the oil pan plug in and tighten it and uh, make sure that it's tightened to uh, not as much specifications, but as tight as it was when we took it out and get that job finished. I can lower this out of the way because the dribble is straight down. Making sure I do not cross thread. It has to thread in by hand. At least three or four threads. So I'll make sure it's snug and then I'll little bit more. Now we still need this because we're going to remove the oil filter and a lot of oil filters can be re removed by hand but we have um, various tools to help us with that if they are too, if the oil filter is too tight. Well here's a picture of some of the oil filter tools. On the far left you've got a band style which has been around for a long time. The two in the middle there are, are the same thing, but two different sizes. They tighten on the filter as you uh, turn them counterclockwise with the ratchet, which is up at the top right. And the bottom right is a uh, socket that's shaped like the, the uh, bottom of a filter. So those will help you. You never ever uh, push a screwdriver through an oil filter. You always use the proper tools for that. Find it a little bit too tight, so. I've selected this oil removing tool that will tighten only when you're removing counterclockwise. If you try to tighten a filter with it, it won't do it, it just expands out of the way. So I'm going to put this on the filter, which is a little high, but. And the ratchet, 3 8 ratchet. Okay, so I've got the filter loose, but not loose enough to leak. I'm going to put the uh, oil on underneath it, raise it up a little bit and remove the filter. Watch you don't get oil on your clothes. Okay, we'll take this out so we can see. L30001. Now we can go by that number if we took a pure later filter off. They're usually, uh, well, they're always white. But if it's a different make, you can't go by the other make, make of filters number. You have to look it up in the catalog. We've kept this filter in the box so that there's absolutely no contaminants get into the filter because that'll go right into the engine. Um, if you accidentally get some dirt in it, throw it in the garbage. I won't worry about that put a new filter on and if we don't have a new filter we'll order one in and if it's in the afternoon so be it the we cannot use anything that we even suspect of being contaminated now I've looked at the old filter and made sure the seal came off. The seal's quite loose, it's not bonded onto the 
filter. In fact, if you work at it, I don't know if I can do this with my gloves, but you can peel it right off like nothing. There's a chance it stays on the adapter on the engine. And so you have to see it on the old filter. And if you've discarded the filter in the, in the proper manner, look at the engine and make sure the seal's still not on. Now, if the, steel, the old seal sticks on and you put the new one on, when you start the engine, one of the seals will blow out, probably the old one, and there'll be three liters of oil within about seven seconds all over the engine compartment and the floor, which you will have to clean up. The uh, seal's got to be lubricated, and you can use old oil because it's just a small amount, the filter or the bucket. And you put a little bit of oil on the seal. It'll make it easier to take out. The seal will expand a little bit in service, so the filter will get tighter uh, because of the expansion of the seal. A little bit tighter. 